Hey, I'm James, and in this video I'm going to quickly run through male reproductive anatomy. This video is aimed at those who are wanting an introduction to this anatomy, or after some revision content. Although this is a standalone video, it may be worth watching our previous videos on the pelvis and perineum if you have not covered this anatomy. Subscribe to Geeky Medics to be the first to know when we release new videos. The model on the screen demonstrates male external genitalia in varying stages of dissection. In this section of the video, I will briefly go through the associated fascia by dissecting the left-hand side of the screen until we reach the anatomy seen on the right side of the model. The text boxes on the screen now include the names of a lot of the layers that I will describe. Terms that are coloured the same colour in each of the text boxes are continuous with each other, excluding the white text, though clearly the skin in each region will be continuous. For example, the chromaster muscle of the scrotum and spermatic cord is continuous with the internal oblique muscle of the anterolateral abdominal wall. The skin of the scrotum and penis is pigmented and thin. The scrotal skin varies in appearance depending on the degree of contraction of the muscle deep to it. The skin on each side meets at a midline raphae. Deep to the raphae is a septum that divides the scrotum into two compartments. The penile skin is loosely connected to underlying structures. At the corona, which is approximately here on the model, it folds to form the foreskin, which is not on the model at the moment. On the ventral surface, a fold or frenulum attaches the penile skin to the glands. When I remove the skin of the penis and scrotum, we see the underlying dartos muscle of the scrotum, which is continuous with the superficial penile fascia. The dartos muscle extends into the septum at the scrotal raphae, which was described before. Continued dissection reveals the external spermatic fascia and the deep penile fascia. As you can see in the text boxes, the deep penile fascia is continuous with the deep perineal fascia, and the external spermatic fascia is continuous with the external oblique muscle on the anterolateral abdominal wall. So let's pick up the pace and go through the layers more quickly. The next layer on the respective structures are the cremaster muscle and the tunica albigenia. Deep to these layers are the corpora cavernosa and the internal spermatic fascia. Finally, if I remove this layer of the spermatic cord on the model, the anatomy will look similar on the left and right sides. I will pick up penile anatomy and the contents of the spermatic cord shortly. So from here I will run through the associated anatomy from the testes to the urethra. Firstly, I will rotate the model to get a closer look at the right testis. What we do not see on the model is the outer covering of the testis, which is the tunica vaginalis, which is deep to the internal spermatic fascia. The tunica vaginalis is essentially the peritoneum of the scrotum, mainly because it is derived from the peritoneum. And like the peritoneum, it has visceral and parietal layers. The visceral layer covers all of the testis, except for the posterior medial aspect. At the poles, the visceral layer continues onto the epididymis and then reflects off to become continuous with the parietal layer. On the model, however, we see the tough tunica albigenia of the testis. I will remove the lateral portion of the right testis to have a look at the internal structure. Like I said before, the testicular capsule is the tunica albigenia. The thick posterior portion of the tunica albigenia forms the mediastinum, which extends to form partitions between the lobules. The lobules contain the seminiferous tubules, where spermatogenesis occurs. The seminiferous tubules extend into the mediastinum as the retitestis. Near the superior pole of the testis, the efferent ductiles pass through the tunica albigenia towards the head of the epididymis. The epididymis consists of multiple convoluted ductiles that extend from the head to the tail, which continues as the muscular ductus deferens. As you can see, this structure starts as a convoluted structure, which begins to straighten out as it ascends on the posterior aspect of the testis. The ductus deferens conveys sperm to the ejaculatory ducts. When you learn about this structure, you will probably go through the contents of the spermatic cord, which I have included in a text box on the screen. The cord is covered with layers of fascia and muscle that extend from the layers of the anterior lateral abdominal wall, as I said earlier in the video. But just to recap, the internal spermatic fascia, cremasteric muscle, 
and external spermatic fascia are continuous with the transversalis fascia, internal oblique, and external oblique, respectively. If you are not familiar with the latter terms, there is a brilliant article on the Geeky Medics website called Abdominal Surgical Resections and the Rectus Sheath that goes through the anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall. The ductus deferens, along with many of the other structures found within the spermatic cord, pass through the superficial inguinal ring, inguinal canal, and then the deep ring. As the ductus deferens passes through the deep ring, it comes away from the other contents of the spermatic cord, passes into the lesser pelvis, and eventually reaches the base of the prostate. Here it is joined by the duct of the seminal vesicle, which forms the ejaculatory duct. The prostate is a pyramidal shaped gland that sits on the pelvic floor. The base of the prostate is related to the neck of the bladder, and the pointed apex surrounds the junction of the prostatic and membranous urethra, something of which I'll describe in a bit. The prostate is enclosed in a connective tissue capsule. The inside is composed of varying amounts of fibromuscular and glandular tissue. The paired seminal vesicles are located between the bladder and the rectum. They are single, coiled tubes which straighten where they meet the ductus deferentes to form the ejaculatory ducts. As you can see, the ejaculatory ducts open into the prostatic urethra. Here are the small bulbal urethral glands that lie just lateral to the membranous urethra. The penis consists of the roots and the body. I covered the roots of the penis in the perineum video, so it may be worth watching that video when you get a chance. However, just to summarize, the root consists of three masses of erectile tissue, which are the two crura and the bulb. The body of the penis contains two corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum, which are extensions of the erectile tissue that form the root. On the screen, we have the left corpus cavernosum. As you can see, it is on the dorsal aspect of the penis. The corpora cavernosa are separated by a midline septum and enclosed within the tunica albuginea. The corpus spongiosum is on the ventral aspect of the penis. At the distal end, the corpus spongiosum expands to form the glans penis. The corona, which is here, separates the glands from the body. You can see that the urethra traverses this aspect of the penis. With that being said, it is worth just briefly highlighting the different parts of the urethra. So there is a preprostatic, prostatic, membranous, and penile or spongy urethra. Other textbooks may use different terminology or identify fewer distinct regions. So that's me on male reproductive anatomy. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought of this video and what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. You can do this by leaving a comment or dropping us an email.